Ladies and gentlemen, our next panel takes a look at AI, security, and our digital future. Moderating is Kai Keller, Financial Innovation Lead, World Economic Forum. Please welcome Kai. Good morning, and welcome to this panel on AI, security, and our digital future. I'm very excited to be joined for this conversation by four amazing panelists. Let me briefly introduce them. All the way on my left, Rohit Arora, co-founder and CEO of the digital lending platform biz to credit Next to him, Hussein Kasey, co-founder and CEO of the artificial intelligence-powered identity verification startup on Fido. We got uh, Bin Rutan, um, CEO of Ping Ants One Connect, and Emre Carter, who runs Cities Treasury and Trade Solutions business in MENA, Pakistan, and Turkey. Thanks to all of you for joining for this conversation. AI, security, our digital future, we got quite a range of topics to cover over the 30 minutes. And I want to start with this notion of our digital future. When we think about the future and the future of financial services, I think Asia and China are a good place to start exploring. So Ben Ru, I want to ask you, when you think about the future of financial services, who is shaping that future? Is it the fintechs? Is it the large techs? Or to what degree do the incumbent financial institutions that we know from the old world of financial services remain somewhat in the driver's seat? Mm. So that's a tricky question because there are bound to be banks there and one connects the fintech, my parent company is Ping An Bank, so <laughs> there isn't really a clear winner. <laughs> I think five years ago, six years ago, uh, the fintechs are a threat and the banks are finding fintechs a threat. Today, is, it's really a collaboration that will win. I think the incumbent banks uh, will still make significant impact if they find the right person or the right fintech to collaborate. Uh, it wouldn't be a one winner. The, the, the entire ecosystem is going to blend a little uh, to make a collective impact. Gotcha. Emery, you sit in one of the largest banks globally. Do you share that perspective? I do, and particularly when it comes to uh, collaboration versus disruptive uh, part of the, the, the whole fintech uh, uh, the, the story that we have seen in the last five, six, seven years. I think uh, the amount of investment that goes into fintech, uh, six, seven years back, it was 80% uh, to the business model that goes claiming to be disruptive to the incumbents. That ratio is now uh, turned upside down. Right now, 80% of the fintech investment globally, all the VCs, the angels, and like, you know, name it, and, 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 and putting their uh, bets on, on the fintechs that goes uh, uh, having collaborative models with the, uh, with the uh, incumbent banks, financial institutions, and like, you know, and but, but that part is, is includes the, you know, uh, what Ben was uh, mentioning. The, I think there will be a, a play for big tech here. And, and whether it be the, you know, the financially systemic becoming, you know, behemoths of the, you know, China right now or, 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 or Amazons of the world and the, you know, the Googles of the world or the Facebooks of the world, how they're going to be turning into, you know, their own business, you know, ecosystems. Start, you know, and we have already seen cases as such that they're start, you know, biting here and there the, the, the financial services, you know, as, as, as we know it. So that's how I uh, see the fintech parts of the things, the big tech and the incumbent banks. And obviously, there's a we can discuss in the uh, next round the, 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 the challenge and, the, and the how the uh, incumbents are responding. Gotcha. I think what we're already learning a bit is it's very hard to predict the future of the industry with a level of certainty, right? And when I reflect on the conversations we had at the World Economic Forum, that future tends to look a bit different five years ago, three years ago, and at the moment. I think what we can do with some level of certainty is argue that data is going to play a major role in shaping the future of the industry. And with data then comes the ability to employ AI and machine learning. And we just heard a lot about the opportunities of AI from the minister. 
Rohit and, and Hussein, you guys both sit at the center of, of what's happening in AI and machine learning. Can you share a bit of what you're seeing, what, what's the latest in that space, and why are fintechs or technology companies like yourself so well equipped to take on the opportunities that AI and data present? Yeah. So I will give two like stats which are very interesting. You know, over the years, uh, you know, we have done over $3 billion of lending in the SME space in US. And, SS, and the SMEs traditionally globally have been undercapitalized, very tough to underwrite, very tough to you know, scorecard, and that has been a big problem. And since we were born as a company in cloud, our loss rates uh, has never exceeded more than 3%. And uh, we have been able to predict a lot of that, you know, leading indicators, when people need money, why they need money, what kind of pricing you need to do. And that could not have been possible if we didn't have data in cloud from day one. And we didn't uh, deploy a lot of the AI algos uh, to do it. The concerns that we have seen over the years is that a lot of the AI has also been like a vaporware. A lot of people used to talk about it. And people have not been able to figure out the real applications uh, of that even now. And I think that's where the real opportunity lies, that data is the oil, is the new oil. And we are seeing that happening everywhere in the world. Uh, and the challenge that a lot of governments and a lot of policymakers also is going to have is that how AI is used in the right way with all the data privacy laws are extremely important. And at the same point of time, how it benefits the common man. I think that's the most important thing because it, why smartphones have really taken off or some of the other te technologies because there's a real benefit to the end you know, client or a customer. And I think that's something is still not very clear in financial services. That needs to be fleshed out better. But there's a lot of opportunity to use technology and data science now, not only to lower cost, but also to manage risks better. Because we are getting into a world where the next recession is coming. We, are, we, are, we have got into a world where the interest rates have gone towards zero already in the developed world. So there's a lot of hunger and demand for a lot of capital to be deployed the right way. But there's also a danger that with so much of capital being available at such cheap cost, are we going to create the next big bubble? And how do you prevent that? And that's, I think, the application of AI in risk management, early warning indicators will become extremely important. Because we have seen that when bubbles get formed, and the bigger the bubbles are, the uh, worse of the effect of that is you know, across the world out there. So to understand the power that AI or machine learning can uh, deliver, I suppose the first question becomes, what is it delivering to, or what is the consumer value proposition? I think that has been a bigger change than actually the technology side. The technology just enabled that. And the big change from a consumer standpoint, specifically for the smartphone generation, the 20 to sort of 35s, is that from the age of 10, most have had a smartphone or another, and have been getting used to having a very good user experience. So when they start looking at banking options, whereas 20 years ago we may have considered who is the biggest bank, like is it JP and others with a massive sort of um, book of assets, we would have seen that as trustworthy. Whereas now, the smartphone generation really don't care. So who's got the coolest app? Who's got the easiest user flow? And when it comes to the first FinTech wave, in my view, that's been a user experience one, which is a better user experience. Machine learning AI has played a role, but uh, you know, good design and other factors played just as important a role. Where we contribute, as on Fido, we have just used machine learning and AI to help people digitally sign up because they want that user convenience. So at home, you can take a photo of your ID and a recording of your face. And we're using machine learning to verify it's a genuine ID and that your face matches the photo. So it's, it's a user experience journey that we have contributed to using machine learning. And when we switch over to what's likely to be the next FinTech wave, that is probably going to be around targeting the underbanked and the unbanked, uh, the bottom of the pyramid. Those who have historically been unprofitable for the mainstream institutions to target, and now that they're able to be targeted and serviced effectively, digitally or remotely, without having to see them face to face, machine learning is going to have to play a role in ensuring it's secure. And that's the second contribution it, it can make. But fun the fundamental change is users see trust uh, in a different way. They look at how transparent the online bank is, how they're using, how, what customer service they offer, and how good an experience it is to use them. And that is what, in my view, has led to their success. Thank you for that. Ben Rudy, you said earlier you 
work obviously with a number of fintechs, but you also sit within one of the very large financial services organizations in the world. Who's better at the AI game? Is it the fintechs who bring the innovation like you two just described? Or is it the incumbent institutions who have massive amount of resources in theory that they could throw at certain problems? Um, you know, it really takes everything. It takes a combination of both. Uh, One Connect is a very unique fintech because our parent company is a bank and we only commercialize technologies that's already deployed within the Ping An Bank. So because it's, it's hard based on technology alone uh, because so much money is needed in the research. Uh, for a startup, it's probably hard to finance that amount of research. Ping An Group invests $15 billion uh, on research and that research is to digitize itself to begin with. And based on the research that Ping An Group has done, then the solution is, is then deployed for other banks. I think our, our unique value proposition shows that uh, to be successful, unfortunately, you need the scale of a bank. You need that massive uh, investment power of the bank. At the same time, you also need the agility of a startup and the talents in a fintech. So we call our group, um, the traditional bankers, we call them the lambs. Uh, because the traditional business, the banking business needs to be prudent, uh, you need to be careful, you're guarding people's money. So you, LAMS is a, is a good uh, culture that we want to incorporate. And then we call our tech business the wolves. We wanted wolves because people need to be hungry, they need to be aggressive, they need, a risk, uh, they need to take risks. And so the, the whole combination between the LAMS and the wolves uh, is what we think is a blended uh, combination that will make us successful. I like that picture. I want to stick with that a bit of the lambs and, and the wolves because it's a good transition. Um, you earlier said the future might not be owned solely by the fintechs nor by the incumbents. It's, it's an ecosystem and everybody will have their role to play in that. And we certainly saw that reflected in the work we did at the forum, where probably five years ago, nobody was taking the fintech disruption, whatever you want to call it, serious, because financial services is different than any other industry. It's very capital intense, it's highly regulated, and it's not going to be disruptive. And then a year or two later, all of a sudden, everybody was in panic. Oh my god, all these fintechs are going to come for our business, and we're going to be, we're going to be out of the door. And now you probably come to the state where you see well, it's neither nor, and we're probably moving into a world of partnerships. Um, I mean, I want to ask you, because you've just run a challenge in MENA asking fintechs to develop innovative solutions for your treasury and trade solution clients. So you interacted with a lot of fintechs, and you asked them to develop some ideas that you want to employ at your institution. What have you learned in that challenge, and what have you learned about partnerships? I think first and foremost, what we learned is obviously, uh, I like this analogy being lambs, and, and, and this was the journey that perhaps lambs try to be, uh, protect themselves first and then to be, you know, uh, uh, and, 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 and here and there become uh, wolves as well. Look, uh, I, uh, I was mentioning about the, the, the how the industry is responding to the challenge and how the transformation from within is happening, and, and, and we have Obviously, a, a lot of streams within the uh, banks like us, but the, you know, it all started with perhaps like you know, a, 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 our, our external venture capital arm has been uh, uh, investing into the starting from Silicon Valley, London, New York. Now they're expanding, you know, eastward as well, going and 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 and, and looking for this uh, investment opportunities, it goes into fintechs and, 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 and so that how that we can marry our, uh, our own platform, our own you know, network, our own clients into, into something you know, new. Somebody who has sort of better thinking in for giving that client experience or, 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 or solution, faster, cheaper, and, 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 and hopefully better. So that is a journey that is happening. And five years ago, we have started and uh, from within how we can uh, uh, flourish or, or nurture and, and, and part of changing the culture, the, uh, the internal startup model. 
It's like a shark tank. You know, anybody who has an idea comes and pitches for you know, a, a group of people who has immediately you get funding and, and, and validate your data and so on, you know, the idea and so on and so forth. So that stream is going on. So that's one e external, one internal. And, and, and how we decided also how we can bring this external uh, talent, external way of looking at things to internal. And that's where how. Uh, our, our journey starts with the fintech collaboration. And it's again like, you know, this is nothing new, five, six years old. We started in New York and, and, and done one in ASEAN, one in London, and, and MENA is the, uh, the, fin uh, the fifth one that we uh, run this. And, and, and uh, why we decided to go for MENA? And we have problem statements, our clients' problem statements, which are very endemic to our part of the world, and which we would like to also attract our own talent for that you know, uh, solution. So we have issued four problem statements around digitizing cash, B2B2C enablement, and assured payments, and digitizing trade, and, and, and 140 uh, uh, fintechs applied all around the world, 20 countries, 105 of the 140 applied from MENA, uh, and, and, and which was designed to be that way. Not to obviously to surprise to anyone, and, and, and we have uh, we have very much impressed with the quality that we have uh, you know uh, received as you know uh, solutions, and in three different stages we have you know shortlisted them. Eight uh, finalists came to uh, UAE beginning of September, and now we have four winners to be going into a POC stage with them, and, 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 and around four problem statements. And, 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 and in the next uh, six to nine months, hopefully turning into a ready-to-go, uh, ready uh, uh, client-ready solution. So again, what we learned is, is obviously, and, 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 and one of them is particularly heavily using uh, machine learning, AI, digitizing cash, and, 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 and minimizing human intervention. And I think we discussed a lot about like, you know, data. Data is the new oil, and instant is now, instant is happening. And, and how we turn into something very mundane, a document processing into, into instant, which has historically been you know, uh, five, time, five uh, days a week and, and eight hours of a working day into a smart contracts, into, into an you know, instant environment using a combination of OCR, AI, and, and, and machine learning, and so on. So guess what? We find a very good solution partner for that. So, and, and, and again, I think you know, in the next round and on, I think the MENA is not going to be the last one. We will uh, you know, run these fintech challenges and, 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 uh, around the world. The whole idea is about getting the agility. If I'm basically working on something that I can do on my own 10 months, and, 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 and with a fintech collaboration, if I can reduce the, the time to market into two months, that kind of agility, we are all running against time uh, as we speak. So. I think it was a, 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 the journey is good. What we've seen is like, you know, we're very much impressed with the quality that we have received. And, 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 and I, I was in the last day, I was mentioning them. I can easily go with the last, uh, the, the next eight, the, you know, uh, to, the, to the final. And, and, and in our eyes, they're all winners. And, and, and even the outside of the uh, winner circle, we will have some uh, other uh, solution partnering. So that was a, a, a quite a journey and experience, which we uh, liked a lot, what we saw particularly coming from Middle East and North Africa. Thank you for sharing that. And the concept, I think, makes sense to everybody, right? You partner the innovation with the resources of a large institution, and this partnership idea is very appealing. What I've heard, though, and what I've seen through the work at the forum, when you actually try to make the partnership happen, it's not that easy, right? And remember the words, wolves, sharks on the one hand, and lambs on the other. You all of a sudden see very different cultures probably clash in some sort of way, very different ways of thinking, right? The way you think about risk might be very different than the way you think about risk. And just finding some common language around that can be very tricky. We've seen that at the forum where we did some work on cybersecurity for fintechs, 
because we realized when it comes to these partnerships, cyber is a major hurdle, and fintechs in particular are at various stages of readiness when they engage with large institutions based on their cybersecurity architecture. And I would imagine for someone like you, cyber is non-negotiable. Um, Hussein, Onfido has been involved in that work and has been a major contributor. If you put your fintech hat on, and are quite honest about the capabilities of fintechs to, do, uh, to develop a good cybersecurity architecture, what do you see there? Are fintechs usually ready to engage with an institution like Citi or JP or whatever the large incumbent institution is? Or what is missing when they start these partnership conversations? So the World Economic Forum workshops have been particularly useful in bringing the different stakeholders so that they all understand the gaps and they can collaboratively work together over frequent iterations to pinpoint exactly what should be prioritized and what areas need to be worked on. When it comes to seeing that in production, i.e. partnerships, part of it is a shared understanding and you can imagine fintechs are typically more agile and may not have the resources, as you mentioned, as sort of mainstream banks or mainstream financial institutions. So there often is a need to compromise. For instance, you know, if, if, if you're a cloud provider or a, 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 as a fintech and a mainstream bank prefers it to be on-prem, there's sort of a argument to be had. A cloud provider utilizing machine learning, live data may be more beneficial and so on and so forth. So there's joint learning to be had because some of the uh, sort of ma mainstream institutions have practices that are there for a reason, and that there's a lot of collaboration. But when you see fintechs active in partnerships <coughs> with mainstream banks, the numbers aren't there yet. A lot of these examples tend to be vendors or suppliers, not necessarily fintechs, so more reg techs are partnering with banks as opposed to fintechs. And part of that may be in that, what is the strategic alignment? So there are stories around on deck when they partner with a few banks, some of the banks behind the scenes were developing their own capabilities. Or vice versa, if you're a mainstream bank and your, uh, the change in your demographic tends to come from the smartphone generation, i.e. under 35, the number of signups is going down, a natural logical step may be, well, let's invest in or in plug in a fintech to cater to that. The challenge may be is that you're going to become more and more detached from that end user and customer, and that's exactly the customer you need to understand more effectively. So there's an argument, say, you want to have a close relationship, or if it is a partnership, at least you're getting all the learnings from that so that you have a long-term strategy as well. So in short, there is a lot of mutual learning to be had in workshops, as the one on the, on the cybersecurity uh, WEF work that we've done has helped, but there's still a long way to go. Roy, when you talk to the, to the lambs, or you engage with them, do you see the cyber issue play out? Is there other hurdles um, that you think make the conversation difficult in some sort of way? Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. So like in US, we have partnership both with Citibank and with say, HSBC. And the interesting part is over the last three years, we have seen the evolution. You know, like three years back when we partnered with Citi in US, like they said, going into cloud, it took us like to convince Citi internal risk committees and everybody like a year. You know, because they had not even done anything in the AWS kind of environment. When we partnered recently with, say, HSBC, you know, it was an easier conversation because now people understand it. I think the challenge on the cybersecurity side that we have also seen as a company is that we have also matured quite a bit over the last three, four years. So working with banks in that sense has been good. I think the challenge for a lot of banks still is that they are very slow to take any decisions. They are still, uh, you know, nobody wants to take a ownership. You know, Citi is a great example in US. We started a great relationship. We have seen three senior level guys come and go in the last you know, three years. Every year there's a reorg you know, out there. And uh, they're very interested to do something more. They, they understand that as a bank, they're shrinking in US very quickly right now. But at the same point of time, I think nobody is willing. I think they, they, like there's a willingness, but there's no sense of direction. Uh, so I think that's a challenge. I think from a cybersecurity, a lot of stuff has happened over the last three, four years behind the scene. And uh, I think there's a lot more c comfort on cybersecurity than what it used to be earlier. Having said that, you know, I think that's one of the most important things for fintechs to focus on. Because if I feel what's the biggest business risk to us, it's the cybersecurity. You know, from a reputation aspect, from data aspect, from everything. But I think having said that to the analogy on lambs and wolves, you know, what we are starting to see in Western world, especially, 
is that with zero interest rate regime coming in, you know, the bank's biggest advantage of having low cost deposits is going away. That's actually becoming a big liability for a lot of banks, especially mid-sized banks, and who don't have credit card business, who don't have any other business. And there's so much of money coming in from large pension funds and asset managers out there that for a lot of fintechs, you know, this is actually the best time to be in business. And the dependence on banks just from a partnership perspective is actually shrinking. And we are starting to see more banks now actually want to partner for more AI knowledge, data, risk management even, uh, and even handling the data itself, you know, because we have seen that on-prem actually for a lot of banks is actually a lot unsafe than being in cloud out there. So I think the thinking is changing. A lot of market forces are reacting to it. And my belief is that, you know, uh, in every revolution that we have seen, whether retail, whether travel everywhere, the new players will eventually dominate the market. You know, the older players have very hard time to change themselves, you know. And, and I think it will be very interesting to see. My belief is that a lot of the m is coming in this space very quickly now. And in US, the regulation still gives banks an advantage. But the other things that are happening around the regulation is actually creating a lot of competitive pressure. And next three to four years will be very interesting, you know, in the market. Asia is a little different. I think Asia is a more future for pure play digital banks and all that. In US, I think you don't need to even be a bank anymore to have a very strong partnership with the capital providers and also getting access directly to the customers. So I think it's a very interesting divergence we are starting to see. And, uh, and, and who the winners will be, nobody knows. But from a partnership perspective, I think we are a lot more mature on both sides now than what was the case two to three years back. Even, you know. I mean, I'm going to give you a chance to react to that in a, in a second. <laughs> Um, but you, you mentioned Asia and you mentioned digital banks. The sort of hurdles uh, Hussein and Roy just identified cyber, be it others, uh, the time it takes larger institutions to work through their risk management functions, etc. Do you see that playing out at Asia, in Asia as well? And when you think about partnerships, what's the, what's the current state of partnership discussions across Asia, particularly in the digital banking space? I think the digital banking discussion, the digital li banking licenses is a perfect opportunity for the fintechs and the banks to form a much deeper collaboration. It started with just the banks being interested to know what the fintechs are doing. By just studying them, the collaboration is probably very surface level. And then also I think the fintechs have seen success over time, so we've grown to be maybe uh, proud <laughs> uh, of our success. To a certain extent, uh, fintechs needs to recognize that we have not uh, complied to the skill and the demand that a bank has. To, uh, the, f the key failure point to, to partner is usually because you don't understand each other's business. I was talking to a headhunter uh, and the chances of uh, placing a banker in a fintech, the success rate is only 20 to 30 percent today. Vice versa also applies, I think, because they don't understand each other's business. But I think the digital banking license will create a much deeper collaboration. Uh, in Hong Kong, uh, 40 applicants apply for the digital banking license, out of which 60 percent is a collaboration between a bank and a fintech. So we see that that combination is a very good combination. Singapore, as well as Abu Dhabi is going to issue a uh, digital banking license. I think this uh, will be the perfect window to create much deeper relationships. Yeah, and I think what you just said about this difficulty of finding a common language and understanding each other, that's certainly one of the major hurdles that I see in any of the workshops that we're hosting. And we have about a minute and a half left, and you said earlier that MENA has its unique characters when it comes to the fintech landscape. There's probably a good um, number of entrepreneurs in the room. Some might apply to your challenge next year. Some might be becoming one of the next unicorns. D from what you just heard around these partnership discussions, the difficulties that there might be, what sort of advice would you give young entrepreneurs who are looking to start out the next fintech unicorn? Good one. Um, look, uh, as I told, I th this was a five-month uh, 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 process. And, and I think, you know, uh, after initial uh, sort of, you know, screening all the applicants, where we left is the, you know, 60 of them. 
which each 60 of them we spent at least one or one and a half hours or you know a, a subset of uh, that 60 actually we spent more time and and how we sort of you know coming to the final day and the reason that you know and 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 we basically flew to you know Amman, Cairo and, and Karachi and and two times we uh, had workshops in UAE invited them and, and it's all about like you know understanding their culture, their level of maturity. I mean, obviously, cybersecurity is a big chapter there, and and how well funded they are, the organized well, and the staffed well, and all these things. So, and and again, that's where you see and 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 at what level of sort of you know stage and their you know uh, 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 their own life cycle, and 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 their own solution and ready to go or. Or still a prototyping and, and so on and so forth. So, and 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 in particularly, what we see is also you know this chemistry. And and I think it's a, a good mention about sometimes we don't understand each other. And 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 obviously there are things that banks are doing well. There are things that like and, and when it comes to you know uh, in a regulatory environment the compliance and 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 how we use or deploy certain level of technology into our you know uh, regulatory reporting and 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 obviously how we deal with the AML sanctions and all these things, and and add on top of that what we are looking for is basically to get there are certain things that fintechs do well. And, 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 but uh, we are very mindful and, and conscious that we're going to be opening our client base, hopefully, and, 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 and to these fintechs. And you need to make a, a sure a level of understanding and equality there. So it's not an easy, uh, uh, easy equation. But having said that, again, like you know, I think uh, uh, this is uh, city has done like you know, and, and, and we have like you know, 30 investments out there, and like you know, some we have already exited. If it's not working, you just basically say, okay, you know, that's it, and like, you know, uh, move on. And, and, but many of them, like, you know, uh, we have likes of, you know, high radius and, 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 and CTO4 was a good example. Uh, here we deployed one, uh, signed and, uh, and, and, and we made it public uh, with uh, MindGate. So these are the, you know, we, the banks are also learning to how to basically, you know, which uh, sort of uh, solutions are going to be, you know, more uh, le less less risky to, to take on, and and, 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 and and while you're extracting all this, uh, the upsides of the agility and and, and, and solutioning and, 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 and time to market. But again, it's a journey. I think we learned one thing at least. At least I did, and that's talk to each other. Um, we're out of time. Please join me in thanking our amazing panel for this insightful discussion, and you're going to have plenty more opportunity to talk to each other after this.